Millions of voters across the United States will head to the polls next Tuesday in crucial midterm elections. We'll talk about that later in the show. But first, we'll turn our attention to Ukraine. Last weekend, the troubled country held parliamentary elections. And this Sunday, people in the self-proclaimed largely pro-Russian independent republics of Donetsk and Luhansk will hold their own elections. The outcome could have major consequences for a preview. Joining us now from Donetsk is CCTV's Kate Parkinson. And Kate, uh, what can you tell us about preparations for this vote? And really, what's being decided here? Well, yes, elections will be held on Sunday in the two breakaway states here in eastern Ukraine, as you mentioned, the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic and the People's Republic of Luhansk. Now, both of these unrecognized states will be holding elections to vote in a prime minister and also a lawmaking body. But exactly what form the new government will take is not really clear nor does it appear to have been decided how the powers of the new government will be divided uh, between uh, the various departments of government. So uh, very little information available at this time. All we know is that the elections will go ahead and they are fairly controversial. And what are Kiev and Moscow saying about this? I would imagine very different opinions, but will the outcome, for instance, be recognised? Well, only it appears by Russia. Certainly the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said that the election should go ahead as planned and Russia will recognize the results. But Kiev hit back at Russia, calling uh, Moscow's stance disruptive and provocative. Kiev has slammed these rebel elections, calling them pseudo-elections, and says it won't recognize the results, nor, it appears, will Kiev's Western allies, certainly the United States and leaders from various uh, countries in the European Union, have also condemned these rebel elections and say they won't recognize the results. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, there were parliamentary elections in Ukraine uh, last week. Uh, what was significant about that result? And in those elections, did Eastern Ukraine take part? Well, no, the uh, rebel-held regions of eastern Ukraine did not take part. Neither did the Crimean Peninsula, which was annexed by Russia earlier this year. And as a result, there will be 27 empty seats in Ukraine's new parliament. Now, a few weeks ago, I spoke to the self-proclaimed deputy prime minister of the uh, Donetsk People's Republic and asked him why they didn't want uh, to be represented in Ukraine's parliament. And he said, very simply, because they don't consider themselves to be part of Ukraine anymore. And that's why they're holding their elections uh, a week later this coming Sunday. Now, as for the, uh, the national elections in Ukraine, they were hugely significant. Certainly, they marked a very significant shift towards the West for Ukraine. The pro-European parties triumphed. And while many in the West of the country see this as a very positive sign that Ukraine is on a path towards eventual membership of the European Union and also NATO, the Western Military Alliance, there are also many who are concerned that with Ukraine taking this quite significant turn towards Europe and towards the West, it will only serve to deepen the already very deep divide between the country, uh, the East and the West of the country. Now, there has been a peace plan which has been in place since September. Uh, how is that plan holding up? And will this election taking place on Sunday have any kind of major impact on that agreement? Well, ever since this peace accord was agreed in Minsk and it was signed by uh, representatives from Kiev and the rebel leadership and also from Moscow, but really ever since it came into effect, it's been very shaky. There has been a ceasefire in place since September the 5th, but there have been almost daily reports of violations. And while the intensity of the fighting has lessened, uh, it is still continuing and certainly people are still being killed. The Ukrainian military say that since this ceasefire came into effect, 160 of their soldiers have been killed. The United Nations says over 300 people, many of them civilians, have been killed during this ceasefire period. So it's already a very shaky ceasefire agreement. And there is concerns that with these controversial rebel elections being held here in eastern Ukraine on Sunday, the already shaky truce could shatter completely because Kiev says that the rebel elections completely undermine the wording of the peace agreement. Under this peace agreement, uh, rebel uh, regions were due to hold local elections under Ukrainian law in December. And that would have given them a certain amount of autonomy, and Ukraine did agree to that, but the rebels completely rejected this. They said it's not enough. They're still pushing 
for full independence. And that's why they're holding these elections on Sunday. And so there is a very serious concern in Kiev uh, and in the uh, international community that the already shaky peace accord could fall apart completely after Sunday's elections. Okay, thanks, Kate. CCTV's Kate Parkinson there from Donetsk.